What's up? So it's been a while since we've delved into the mind of this little weirdo. <laughs> you know, the one that dyed his hair orange or tried eating grass just to see why the cows liked it. And I recently went to visit my parentals who were sharing some of the reasons why I was such a bizarre child. I mean, come on guys, it's not my fault. I inherited 50% of the weirdness from each of you and then it just went into me. Uh, and it's been, wait. The last Weird Kid video was in 2014? No. I'm just gonna take a moment because time has no meaning. Right, after that wash of slight terror, I'm gonna jump into it, starting with rocks. I collected rocks, okay? <laughs> Not like shiny gemstones, no. It was an entire collection of regular plain old gray rocks. Why? <laughs> I'd love to know. Who knows? But I was vibing with them. I even named them. Ooh, Lorraine looking extra igneous today. Oh, Bill. That crust can't be beaten. I remember proudly sharing my rock collection with my parents and I think they were like, wow, that's amazing, Phil. Amazing, Phil. In their heads, they were just like, what is wrong with our child? Then they went upstairs. And I think they had some kind of team meeting. They came down and said, in exchange for you releasing your rocks into the wild, we'll get you a pet hamster. Henry, the hamster. So once Henry was settled, the day came to get rid of my rocks. I remember it so vividly. <laughs> Took them into the garden and I placed them under a tree. Goodbye, my child. They're probably still there. <gasps> I loved you. Salt. Okay, quick one. Sometimes when I would walk past the dining table, I would get the salt shaker, pour a little bit on my hand and just give it a little <laughs> lick. <laughs> I don't know why. It was just a little bit. Maybe I craved that mineral. I'd never have more than one lick a week, but... In that moment, it was a salty delight. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Moving on. Pokemon. The next story is about me making a fool of myself because of a Pokemon card. And very related to that fact is my dream sponsor, Pokemon, is back, you legends. And they sent me a whole bunch of goodies from their new trading card collection. Remember the last time I got Pokemon cards and the first one I pulled was the rarest of the bunch and people thought I rigged it, but I was just weirdly lucky. Let's see if that happens again. So the new collection Sword and Shield Brilliant Stars comes in booster packs, builder battle boxes, which is like a ready to play deck and elite trainer boxes like this one. The elite trainer box seems like the best place to start as you get all of this stuff and you can grab the enhanced elite trainer box exclusively at the Pokemon Center. Ah, the booster packs still smell the same. Okay, let's open one. The first Pokemon I get is the vibe <laughs> I give off. <laughs> It's a snow runt. Yeah. I get it. I understand. Oh, it bounces happily around in cold environments. Okay, the next one represents you guys. It's a, <laughs> a nose pass. At least it's strong and proud. Ooh, Zamazenta V card. We got a rare one. Bonus points for it being a majestic dog. Along with V cards, there's also very special V star cards, which give you one V power to use per game. Let's try and find one. V-Star? No, shiny Eevee though. That looks cool. I like that one. Oh, I always get a tingly vibration of excitement whenever I open a trading card pack. Maybe you should treat yourself and then you will feel the same. Are you the one? Yes, I got one. Shiny Arceus. Imagine you're a tiny innocent Pikachu and then the god of Pokemon just used star birth on you. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. I also had a game with these when my friend was visiting up north, which was super nostalgic, but it's got me addicted to the card game again, so I really wanna play some more. But also, if you don't wanna play, they are fun to collect as well. So I'll put a link below if you wanna get yourself some cards. So as I said, speaking of Pokemon, around the time Pokemon cards were first released, a kid at my school, Kevin, was bragging to everyone that he had gotten a shiny Charizard, which was the rarest card everyone wanted. You'd swap your mum for one if you were given the option. And he got so much attention at school, and I just wanted a piece of that attention. But alas, all my cards have been Jigglypuffs and Goldeens up to that point. Oh, I did get a Machoke. That was a highlight, if you remember my feelings towards Machoke. But yeah, one day he was being super obnoxious and bragging extra hard about his shiny. And I just had enough, so I said, whatever, I got a rarer card than that. I got the Diamond Charizard shiny. They only made five and I got one in a pack from Japan because my dad moved there. Anyway, obviously he asked to see it. What was I thinking? I had not planned this far in advance, okay? And I was just like, uh, no, I can't bring it to school because my dad, he's uh, locked it in a safe under our house, so no one steals it. I didn't even have a basement. What was I saying? <laughs> I'm wondering what would be under my old house if we dug it up. Either Kevin was being a good friend and realized I was just being a lying weirdo, or he was super dumb and believed the story. Cause he was just like, ah oh, darn, I'd love to see it one day if you could go back in the basement. Thanks for not pushing that one, Kev. Or I would have ended up leaving all my family and moving to Denmark out of awkward shame. And now look at me, Kevin. I've got an Arceus. 
Lick that! Twin. Twin. I thought twins were super cool and I wanted to be one. On second thought, I don't think my house would have survived two fills clumsily rampaging everywhere. But if I could have sold my soul for a twin, I would have. Perfect opportunity came up when I went to Beavers, which is like baby Cub Scouts. I guess I was a furry from an early age. Anyway, one day for literally <laughs> no reason, I told some select people that I was a twin. Yeah, I've got a twin. And I said that my twin might show up at a beavers session if I couldn't make it. I kept this just to the other seven-year-olds as I figured the beaver leader, what do they call it? Head fox? Barn owl? I don't know, <laughs> something. If they found out, they would have rumbled me and told everyone. So after I've been on holiday, I thought now is the perfect time. I've been away for a bit, gonna go back into beavers as the twin. So I stole some of my brother's wet look hair gel and I remember pulling my fringe down into individual spikes. <laughs> <laughs> Not spiking up, but like down onto my forehead. <laughs> and then I went in to Beavers as the twin and told everyone that my name was Leon. <laughs> Leon Lester. Has a nice ring to it, to be fair. And once I was there, I put on this cool kid persona. Just call me Leon Lester. Pretended I liked football stickers. I mean, I like looking at the footballers on the stickers. It wasn't a full lie. I love those footballs. And the four or five kids that I told actually believed that I was Leon. I couldn't believe it. It was happening. I was a twin. I mean, I guess why wouldn't they believe me? Why would someone be so weird <laughs> to make something like that up? I was basking in all the twin glory and attention until someone said something to me that was so mortifying, it ruined everything. They said, wow, you're so much more fun than your brother, Phil. And in that moment, I crumbled. I was a puddle of jealousy. I was jealous of myself for being cooler than myself. And I blurted out, what do you mean? I am cool. And I was rumbled. Thankfully, they saw it as a funny joke and not that I was a total weirdo, which is kind of what I deserved. So yeah, RIP Leon, never seen again. I said you should get back in your box until we finish this. Hello. Garden sleep. Okay, so finally, no way to sugarcoat this. I had the overwhelming urge to go sleep in my garden. <laughs> and I'm talking just like duvet and pillows under the stars without a tent. I think I got it from a cartoon. Like some characters went and slept out under the stars and then in the morning they saw the sunrise and were like, ah, nature. I wanted to do that. So you can probably tell where this story is going. <laughs> One night, unbeknown to my parents, I took my blanket, I took my pillow, I went out the side door into the back garden and just lay down underneath the stars. So that was kind of nice, peaceful, went to sleep for about 20 minutes until I woke up with an entire slug on my arm. Now I'm not scared of slugs, but this was a gross slug. It had fully secreted on me. I don't know what mood they're in when they release an overwhelming amount of slime, but it was all over my arm. I was mildly freaked out, so I just kind of flung it across the garden and then something happened. I heard a rustle in a bush. It was over for me at that point. I went into full panic mode. And I realized that sleeping in the garden in the middle of the night with no lights was actually terrifying. And what was I thinking? What was even rustling? A Northern English wolf? The slug king? Peeved that I've just chucked his boyfriend across the garden? Machoke? I wish. I didn't stick around to find out. So I picked up my blanket and my slug slime covered pillow and walked to the back door where I realized when I closed it, it had locked the deadlock and I could not get back inside my house. I had to walk down to the front of the house in my pajamas where all my neighbors could have seen and ring my own doorbell at what I think was probably two in the morning by now. Imagine what my parents were thinking. So a very confused dad just opened the door a crack and then saw my face like, I'm sorry. He was not a happy bunny seeing his damp and slightly traumatized son just standing in the garden in his pajamas. <laughs> That's when I got the warning that maybe I could have been eaten by an ax murderer and if I want to go role play as a squirrel in the future, maybe give the parents a heads up first and we can go shopping for a discount tent. Sorry, dad. Also, sorry, slug. And now you're probably understanding why I turned out this way. So if you've got any stories about why you were a weird kid, please leave them in the comments below as I'm gonna make a load of shorts reacting to some of my favorites. Thanks again to Pokemon Sword and Shield Brilliant Stars for sponsoring this video. If you wanna check them out, I'll put them in the link below. And I think we should open one more booster pack just for old time's sake. What are we gonna get? Fingers crossed for a rainbow rare. Right, the first one I see represents the rest of 2022 for us all. It's Hitmon Top. I mean, it's the top. It's not the Hitmon Bottom. So, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. Okay, the next one I see represents my 2023. Cubchoo. Oh, it's the, <laughs> it's the snot Pokemon. It will smear its snot on anyone it doesn't like. I mean, I can relate to that. I don't like interacting with other people, so I'll take it. Hope you all are having a good day, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.